Hi, my name is Al Tritel. Today I'm going to talk about getting prepared for the WP29 Automotive Cybersecurity Regulation from home. I will first talk about the current state of automotive cybersecurity. I will then dive into WP29 regulation and various details of compliance with the regulation. And I will end up with some tips on rapid adoption of the regulation. So when looking into the automotive market and the state of cybersecurity um, in particular, obviously um, it's obvious to everybody that regulation is coming uh, our way, your way. Um, the ISO 2143 4 is a new international standard for cybersecurity by design uh, for the automotive industry. Uh, there's been a few drafts already and the, the expectation is that this will become a standard uh, very soon. And uh, obviously the, 20, uh, the WP29 regulation, uh, UN regulation, uh, which is talking about uh, um, cybersecurity management um, for uh, type approval for vehicles um, and uh, various requirements. And this is also in a very late draft format. And um, in, a, in a few countries, it's already uh, being discussed uh, uh, to be become a, a, um, you know, a de facto uh, regulation. So automotive vendors, both OEMs and uh, uh, tier one and two suppliers must transform their operations to comply with these uh, standards and regulations um, and um, everybody is looking uh, into uh, ways to simplify that transformation. So what exactly is WP29? So WP29 actually is not a name for uh, a, re a regulation. It's the World Forum for Harmonization of Vehicle Regulations. It's part of uh, an organization in the UN that is responsible for various uh, um, economic um, activities in Europe uh, in particular. And inside uh, the WP29 organization, there's a, a working party called GRVA, which is responsible for automated and autonomous uh, connected vehicles. And this working party uh, uh, built from uh, many in individuals from uh, various countries and organizations has been working on a new UN regulation for approving vehicles to be cyber security safe and for vendors manufacturing uh, software for the automotive industry to uh, build uh, what is called cyber security management system. And uh, the, the regulation is talking about what is required from such a system in order to comply with this regulation. So basically, uh, the, the regulation is talking about type approval, which is what is required from a, a vehicle to be cybersecurity safe. Uh, what, what are the characteristics of, the, of that uh, um, requirement? And uh, a certificate for compliance for cybersecurity management system and the word system is a little bit misleading, uh, uh, making, uh, you know, computer guys like myself think about, you know, uh, uh, maybe a, it's a software uh, solution in particular, or maybe some physical servers, um, uh, you know, a, a system, quote, quote. But when the regulation is talking about a system, it's the combination of various things that support cybersecurity within the organization. It's, it's not necessarily uh, a particular system. So the CSMS is, it's a systematic approach to, to managing risk within the automotive um, aspect. It's the organizational processes that are required in the organization to, uh, to develop a, a cyber safe software, a cyber safe car, and it, it talks uh, about the responsibilities and governance that are required to achieve uh, proper uh, handling of threats to vehicles and the protection against these threats uh, within vehicles. 
So what are the requirements uh, in details of a CSMS? First of all, it has to cover uh, the three phases, um, you know, development, production, and post-production. So it basically covers, uh, you know, different activities within the organization that develops the automotive software, um, taking into account all of these uh, phases uh, and uh, various processes within the organization have to uh, adequately consider security. It's um, both the organization itself, uh, you have to be able to identify risks, to assess them, to categorize them, properly treat them. You have to have processes to verify that uh, the risks are indeed uh, identified and, and managed, that you, you test for cybersecurity on a regular basis, you make sure that uh, your uh, risk assessments are up to date. It's this, you know, the CSMS uh, talks a lot about continuous uh, activities. This is not a one-time effort. And in fact, the regulation itself um, is uh, calling for um, continuous um, auditing of the, um, the CSMS um, within the organization. And of course, uh, you have to have processes for monitoring um, cyber security issues, be able to detect and respond to them as they come, uh, as they are uh, disclosed and introduced. And uh, last but not least, the CSMS within an organization has to make sure that third party suppliers of uh, software and hardware are um, covered as well, meaning it is not enough for you yourself, your organization to be compliant with all of the above. You have to make sure that your suppliers are also meeting these requirements. So when you um, use their uh, pieces of software or hardware, that uh, you will comply with the uh, regulation as well. So uh, to summarize that, Basically, uh, the 7.2 requirement for the CSMS is all about applying processes throughout the life cycle and document these processes and uh, the results of these activities as well. So what are the requirements for vehicle types, the vehicle type approval? So obviously the manufacturer uh, of the vehicle uh, or the component has to have a relevant uh, certificate for its CSMS, its ability to perform cybersecurity within the organization. And it has to have documents that prove that the manufacturer is collecting and verifying information across its supply chain, that it has documents that prove that it is performing regularly risk assessments, it performs testing for risks, uh, it documents its mitigations and decisions, and it documents how uh, the risks were treated and managed. So the entire activity of the CSMS has to be uh, well audited by the manufacturer uh, across its supply chain to, uh, to be able to uh, prove to the authorities auditing uh, for the WP29 regulation that this vehicle is indeed as cybersecurity safe as possible, um, as defined by, by the regulation. So again, the discussion here is a lot about documentation and the focus on supply chain. So you have to perform the activities documented. What about the risk assessment model? So, if you look at it, um, the WP29 regulation is talking about the type approval and the CSMS. Um, some details are left out on the, um, the, the way to achieve the actual um, assessment and so on. But the ISO 21434 um, is a perfect model for how to perform risk assessment. It talks a lot about the details of the processes and the work products that are required and, and even going down to the uh, the level 
uh, of details within their, the, the working uh, products. So it is a perfect match for achieving the, 20, uh, the WP29 regulation. And it, it's a great uh, resource to use. So if you look at both together, the WP29 and the ISO uh, um, combined, you basically, for every function uh, within the um, automotive software development house, um, the OEM or the, or the supplier, you have all these phases that, you know, the design and, and verification and, and validation and so on. For each one of them, there is um, some cybersecurity activity that you have to perform in order to meet the regulation. So for every one of these stages, you, you have the corresponding activities, documents, uh, processes that you have to um, think about in order to, to comply with this regulation. This is... Uh, really a cybersecurity by design uh, concept here across the supply chain, across the development cycle. So how can all of this be achieved? We at Cybellum looked at um, the various aspects of achieving this um, WP29 regulation, and we came up with this methodology of three phases. The assessment phase, in which you assess the current environment, you look at the organization and the different processes, the existing documentation, the cybersecurity culture uh, as a whole. You then prepare a gap analysis of what's missing, and you go into the implementation phase, in which you actually go uh, item by item, document by document, process by process, compare that with the regulation and apply the changes and basically apply the WP29 requirements onto the organization. You make it um, using a compatible framework that is compatible with the organization that was prepared in the assessment phase. And then the third phase, which is the operational phase in which you, you apply all of the achieved new or updated processes onto the organization, you make it live, you make every person that's involved in cybersecurity in the organization use these processes uh, and um, uh, basically you monitor for, and evaluate whether these processes are active and uh, operational. And at that point, you're basically ready to go. You're ready to um, claim that the CSMS is ready and complying with the regulation and, and then the organization can be audited for WP29. So the first phase assessment, if you uh, look at it in more details, um, it's all about reviewing the existing um, environment, existing documentation, uh, interviewing people, and performing the gap analysis, uh, which we believe can be done remotely today, um, you know, using all the uh, available technologies um, which are heavily used these, these days. The result of this phase would be a clear overview of the uh, requirements that are uh, open versus the existing um, you know, requirements of the regulation and a detailed gap analysis, um, what is actually already there versus the uh, requirements uh, as they are detailed in the uh, regulation. Second step is implementation. This is where you define the policies or update the existing ones. Uh, you define the roles or, or and responsibilities or update the existing ones. And you, you go through all the risks, all the systems that are in use, all the tools. And, and all of these can be done remotely with, uh, with the help of uh, the existing uh, roles within the organization that are, are responsible for these activities. And the result would be a defined, uh, a well-defined cybersecurity organization. Maybe it already exists. Maybe some updates are required. And you will also have a full catalog of damages, uh, damage scenarios, uh, uh, threats, and, and, and risks. Maybe some of these exist. Maybe all of them. But th this needs to be well reviewed against the uh, against the regulation requirements. 
You would also need to have uh, a full mapping of the systems that are in use and the tools um, and how they interact with the processes as well. And all of this, we believe, can be achieved uh, remotely as well. And making uh, it all work in, in, in practice, in operations uh, phase, it's to implement the practices of uh, this new monitoring uh, requirements uh, to be constantly evaluating these practices and fine-tune them and uh, validating that they are uh, performed on a regular basis. And obviously, uh, the last step before getting uh, audited to be uh, compliant is to perform a, a comprehensive review um, against the requirements uh, before you, uh, you get audited. And uh, the results from this phase are, um, you know, the full mapping of uh, the uh, continuous risk assessment processes and uh, to have a well-defined monitoring and evaluation processes for these uh, uh, risk assessment um, capabilities. And to have a, a validation report that everything is ready and um, a self-audit report for the, uh, before getting complied. Just to just to make sure uh, that you are ready, and we believe as well that all of these can be done remotely today with uh, remote access capabilities, uh, conference calls, uh, uh, you know, remote web sessions, and so on. As a lot of us today work uh, remotely from our offices, uh, a lot of this activity, if not all, can be done remotely uh, already uh, to get prepared for uh, for the regulation. So just to summarize, uh, who are we at, at Cybellum? Cybellum is a leader in automotive software risk assessment solutions. We uh, sell today to top uh, automotive OEMs and tier ones and to uh, technology companies worldwide, our risk assessment software-based solutions. We are uh, working uh, very closely with uh, the ISO 2143 uh, 434 uh, uh, activities, we're in, heavily involved there, uh, as well as uh, act very active in helping customers to uh, to work on their uh, risk assessments um, within their uh, organizations and vulnerability assessment uh, within their organizations. And we believe our uh, unique approach to risk assessment uh, being automated and, and uh, highly focused on the automotive industry uh, is uh, very relevant for getting certified uh, rapidly for the new uh, regulations. So thank you very much. We encourage you to contact us on our various channels for more information on WP29 adoption and uh, risk assessment solutions for the automotive industry. Thank you.